Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here. Got a CCNP Switch video boot camp and pop quiz here for you today. In about 10 seconds, I'm going to bring a question up on the screen. It's going to have a lot of choices, so be ready for that. And then we're going to go straight to the live equipment and see exactly what the answers are on live Cisco switches. So let's go ahead and take a look at today's question, and it's about an Ether channel. Now the Ether channel's already been built, and a port inside the Ether channel goes down. Which of these statements is true? And of course, it's you know, choose all that apply, otherwise it would be easy. Uh, but we've got seven choices, but really what we're looking here, looking at here is, you know, with A and B, is the Ether channel going to go down for a few seconds, or is it not going to go down at all? Then with C, D, and E, we're looking at it and saying, okay, is the port cost going to rise, lower, or not change? And then with F and G, you know, what happens when the port comes back up? Is it automatically going to rejoin the EC if it hasn't been reconfigured, or do we have to do something else? I'm going to show you a couple of other commands here, some bonus commands as well. So let's go ahead and bring up the live equipment. And I need to reposition that a bit. Thank you. Now, what's the first command we ought to run to see which one of our interfaces are trunking right now to begin with? Show interface trunk, right? So we've got a PO1 here. That stands for port channel, the PO part, and the 1 is the number we gave it. It's port channel 1, and that is the logical re excuse me, representation of our Ether channel. So, so far, so good. Now, what about that Ether channel show command? You've got a lot of information you can get here. I would use summary. And you can see here that in group 1, port channel 1, we have ports 10, 11, and 12 in there. Now, how do we see that port cost and all of that? Same way we do with our regular ports, and that's with show spanning VLAN followed by the VLAN number. Now, we've got four other ports in the VLAN. We're not paying any attention to those in this particular question. And we've got a port channel 1 root, forwarding, and a cost of 9. So let's watch that because what I'm about to do is go ahead and shut down port 10. The joy of a lab. And we'll just shut it down. Let's see what the resulting messages are. A little bit's going to be off the screen. And I'm going to go ahead and run show spanning VLAN 1 again. And a couple of things here. First off, it would be easy to say, okay, the Ether channel went down for a moment, but it didn't because the messages here are referring to the physical interface. Of course, administratively down, one of the very first things we learn is that means that support's been shut down. And then we've got our line protocol. Naturally, that's going to be down. But the Ether channel itself did not go down. So if we hop back to our question, the first correct answer is B. The Ether channel is not going to go down. That's part of the point of building an Ether channel to begin with. Now, as far as the port cost rising, lowering, or changing, since there's less bandwidth in the Ether channel now, because we lost one of our ports, we lost one of our channels in the Ether channel, the cost is going to go up. Because the more bandwidth we have available, the lower the port cost. So here, the cost went up. That is a result of an Ether channel. So the next correct answer is C, the port cost will rise. Now, joy of joys, when we get that port back online, what's going to happen? As a matter of fact, let's throw in another question. You know, Is the port cost going to go back to 9, or do we have to do something else? And let's just take a quick look at that by reopening the port. I knew I wouldn't get it out of there. VLAN 1. We see the port came back up, and we got our line protocol message just three seconds later there at the very bottom. But the key here is the port cost has gone right back down to 9. So all of that is going to happen dynamically, and all of this, frankly, is part of, as I say, the joy of an Ether channel. When something goes wrong, you'll notice it because hopefully you have a monitoring tool that says, hey, this port went down. And of course, you'd notice that you don't have as much bandwidth in the Ether channel, but the Ether channel is not going to go down unless it loses every single port that's been put into the Ether channel. So the correct answers here were the Ether channel will not go down, but the port cost will rise. 
and when the port comes back up it will automatically rejoin the ether channel if it hasn't been manually removed we don't have to do anything and as we saw that port cost goes right back down to nine so thanks for taking today's ccnp switch pop quiz we've got a lot more on the way so be sure to subscribe to us out on our youtube channel and thanks for making tba part of your cisco certification success story